driving? Well, firstly, we are doing what thousands of South Africans do during school holidays. We are on a road trip. We're on our way back from the West Coast. West Coast. And we're in a vehicle that thousands of South Africans use to do such road trips. We're in a Toyota Fortuna. Um, this has just been updated. Um, it was introduced in 2016 and I think the next one is only in 2026. Oh, wow. So they'll probably continuously update um, and improve the package until the new one comes. Um, yeah, this is facelift. So big news, um, different headlamps, different grill, um, different wheel design. I think Fortuna is doing, they've done quite well actually. They've, they've moved Fortuna um, um, a little bit more upmarket than when it started. So it looks a bit more sophisticated on the road, which is nice. Uh, what are the roads? So I said on social media that uh, I compared the Fortuna to a Leatherman because it was rugged, but actually I was wrong. It's I compare it to a felt scoot. Oh. And um, because it's instantly familiar, it feels comfortable to get into, um, it's rugged, it won't let you down, and it's not afraid to get dirty. It's pretty good, eh? What do you think? Pretty I feel, good. I feel scoot. Um... Yeah, what did you ask me? The pros. pros. So it's a proven package. Um, it's solid. Um, massive after-sales um, network with Toyota. Mm. Good resale. Um, yeah, it feels well put together. It's built in Durban, um, and they've after the flood damage last year, they've they're back up to um, producing uh, maximum capacity. So oh, wow. yeah. So no, they've done well done to Toyota. Uh, so because it's so well put together and it's, look, it's Bucky based, it's based on the Hilux, mm. I think it feels um, quite solid on the road and that that can be a negative in terms of a road like this, this is the R27, which isn't a bad road, but, but you, you definitely feel the road beneath the car. So I know a lot of Fortuna drivers look to aftermarket um, suspensions um, or damper setups like old, old man emu and things like that. Um, just to just to build in a little bit more um, um, wiggle room, uh, soften soften the ride. Yeah. So after a drive like this, which is about 200 k's, you, you feel Start like you feel it in your kidneys. Yeah. And that's where we'll talk about the rivals. That's where a car like the Ford Everest, they've moved it slightly more. Um, yes. On, uh, on road bias and more comfortable. So yeah. Was that pros or cons? cons. Uh, what are we on cons? Yeah. So uh, one thing you have to mention, and Toyota won't like it, but you have to mention it when you talk about the Fortuna, is those third row of seats. If you don't need them, and if you remove them completely and leave them at home, and you need tools to do that, they don't just clip out. Now they are folded, folded flat, and then folded up, oh, so yeah. they do take up a fair amount of luggage space. So the other rivals, most of all of the other rivals, the third row of seats fold flat into the boot when you yeah, don't need them. Yeah, which is much better. Yeah, so that that, that has to be noted as a Negative but it hasn't package. put Fortuna people off. No, it certainly won't. Uh, and the interior, I'm not sure I like the So they've the changed the interior so you get this red on black um, leather trim in um, VX spec. Don't like um, it. You get ambient lighting. That's nice. Um, yeah, Kate doesn't love red on black. No. Yeah. I do get a bum warmer, which is good. You get a seat warmer. Um, which I have interesting, you don't get a sunroof in a Fortuna as far as I know. No Fortuna. No. That's interesting. What are the competitors? So, historically its competitor was a Ford Everest, or its nearest competitor, but now, like I said, so Ford's latest Everest, they've, they, Ford says it's targeting Prado now, it's, it's done with Fortuna, uh, which is quite quite something, but I think we have, we're not allowed to drive the Everest just yet, um, maybe Ford will change their mind, but um, I have driven it, and it does feel a little bit more substantial on the road, um, the interior is a lot more modern, um, it's more comfortable on the road, and then it comes with the V6 TDI, um, which is obviously an advantage. But it's about 50,000 Rand more than the top spec Fortuna. Um, so uh, I think I might pay that extra 50. You would, the Toyota guy would never. No. So that's worth remembering too. Toyota. We've even been waving at Ranger people, and they don't like yeah, it. Yeah, I like to throw it in the mix just to surprise them and, and see the reaction, but. I mean, one thing yeah, you can't deny in this country is Toyota Toyota drivers are fiercely loyal and they certainly won't be driving, swapping into an Everest anytime soon. Fuel consumption? Oh, we're on 10 litres per 100 kilometres, which is probably acceptable. This is the 
2.8, so 150 kilowatts, 500 newton meters. Only comes with a six-speed automatic gearbox. So when you once you put cruise control on, you're sitting nicely. It's, 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 it'll do the job. 10 liters per 100 kilometers isn't too bad. It's pretty cheap. And would you buy one? I think. So here's the thing. So Fortuna comes in four x two or four x four. Obviously, four x four gets you off-road capability. Um, like the Hilux, it's very, it's very capable off-road. If you're going four x two, for what we needed for for this trip, and we didn't do, we just did a little bit of gravel, not much four x four. I would get a Kia Sorento, to be honest with you. Um, a lot more comfortable, a lot more refined, um, a lot more European uh, in terms of driving abilities. So I think in terms of the Fortuna's direct arrivals currently, which is the Mitsubishi. Um, Jero Sport and the Isuzu MUX, I would get a Fortuna. Um, if I had a bit more money, I might look at Everest. You might? Yeah. You would look at Everest? I would look at Everest. Yeah, it's a tricky thing. So, again, but you're never gonna convince thousands them. of Toyota owners will be more than happy with the Fortuna package and they'll love it just the way it is, including okay. its fairly firm ride. Um, but there are options. If you want 4x4, you go. If you want 4x2, Kia Sorento. Yeah. Cool.